Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Sleep Wire Show, only on Dash Radio. Woo! I am so pumped to be here. I missed out on last week's forum, but that's why I'm here again to be with you guys. I'm your host, Nick Sumrall. And with me today, I only have one co-host to battle this week out with. Dun, one dun, co-host dun. to take on week 11. That's right. His name is Professor Kareem. That's the best intro you've done on this show. Well, you know, it's because I don't have Mickey. Like, you know, I like, you know what it is? I love Mickey. I love working with him. But, like, you know, it's cool. You at least have some kind of nickname. I use my full name. And then it's just Mickey. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's just Mickey. Yeah, that's how it is. How you doing tonight, man? I'm great, man. You know, uh, unfortunately, I missed last week's show. Uh, I told you I had off the air, you know, I had a chest cold. And uh, those suck trying to do a radio show, especially for two hours. Uh, so it wouldn't have been fun for any of you listening out there. So it's a good thing I wasn't on last week. Hey, but Mike did a good job filling in. Hey, there you go. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed last week's episode with Mike. And I certainly hope you guys will enjoy this episode with just me and Professor Chris. And we have so much to cover. But the first question I have for you is, do you start picking up defenses right now who have nice fantasy playoff schedules? Or do you just go ahead and keep streaming? You know, this is about the time when I start looking at streaming defenses. My favorite guy who's or guy team who's probably on waivers right now is the Bears. I think they have a pretty oh, good you playoff. You stole game. mine. You stole <laughs> mine. You freaking thief. Especially, you know, the one time you picked the Bears is when, you know, it has to do with something you thought of for the question. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's kind of true, but hey, I think Their defense has played better than what their stats show because they're kind of middle of the road in basically most defensive stats. But I feel like they've played better than that. They've got a great playoff schedule for the fantasy playoffs anyway. So in the leagues where I had a roster spot to burn, I've been stashing them. Yeah, I mean, you look at who they're playing week 13. They're going to be playing the 49ers. Uh, They're going to be playing the Bengals week 14, Lions. You know, they play them this week. I don't think that's a tough matchup for the Bears. And then you got the Brown mixed in there as well. So a lot of pretty beatable teams, teams that the Bears should be ahead ahead of. Oh, Delaney Walker, you catch that touchdown. What ah, is with damn you? it. My stream is behind again. <laughs> Sorry, he didn't catch it. I just but, saw the run. Uh, all right. Well, he uh, How, just, just wait till you see it. Okay. How about you? You about wait that. till I get excited. I no, I cannot contain the <laughs> excitement that's in. Listen, you bring the stats, I bring the personality. That's kind of how this team works. I mean, Don't I bring a little that? bit. Yeah, but you know, I'm like ten times that. You know what I mean? Come on, give me something. Give me something. <laughs> I'll give you. I something. may not be. Let's let's go yeah, like go. seven and a half times. <sighs> I'm, I'm sticking with, with a strong ten, my friend. No, I'm <laughs> stuck. Um, I can't. I can't. I won't. I won't let you do it to me. No, I'll right. let you do it to me. We'll agree. To All right. Here. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, but I 100% agree with you, though. Uh, defense to, to go for, if, you really, if you're really far ahead, a lot of people probably cut the Bears' defense this week. Some people had already picked them up, so I'm sure that they're out there on waivers. If you're that far ahead, you're uh, an 8-2 and two team or 7-3, and three, basically guaranteed at this point to be in the playoffs, go ahead. You go ahead, you pick up that defense. But... Otherwise, I'm still sticking with streaming. All right, there you go. There you go. Well, without Mickey reading the news, I guess I will just have to do it all like the great host I can be and do oh, the news. Oh, you know, we, we can share <laughs> this duty. <laughs> you said do. Uh, <laughs> no, it's all right. We will, we will tackle the news together, of course. But let's kick it off with the hot topic this week. Football starts here. Finally, finally, we have solid Zeke news. Ezekiel Elliott is withdrawing his appeal, which means that he has accepted the verdict and will serve his full six-game suspension. Oh, I mean, look, let's let's face it. There wasn't enough evidence to support this whole thing from the get-go. We've said that till our faces are still were blue in the face. But it is what it is. It's happened. And there's nothing we can do about it now. What's good is that the 
the now as far as fantasy is concerned, it's settled. He served the first game of his suspension last week. Five more to go. The bad news of all this, we learned nothing last week, really. I mean, maybe maybe Alfred Morris will be the guy, but he didn't look great doing it. What do you think, Chris? No, none of them look great. I mean, I think missing Tyron Smith at left tackle had a whole lot to do with it, but it was just an ugly game all around. I do still th- – I mean, I think Darren McFadden, completely 100% droppable mm-hmm. in fantasy. Uh, but Alfred Morris, I feel like, is going to have a better game. Yeah, I still think that you got to hold on to Alfred Morris regardless of a, of a crap performance. But you're right. Missing Tyron Smith certainly hindered that offense. You know, they, you have de- a banged-up Des Bryant, which speaking of Des Bryant, uh, you know, he did practice in full on Thursday – so that's some good news. So yep. maybe you'll have a healthier Des Bryant. Was there any more news that you saw out there on Tyron Smith? Is he expected to be in this game? I don't think he practiced today. And if he did, it was in a limited fashion. Right, so I, not- I want to go back real quick and say we, we should mention this, that Zeke does only have five, only five more games, but he will be back week 16 for the fantasy championship. Very true. So So he's he's not going to help you in the playoffs, but if you make it to the championship game, I think if the Cowboys are still – there's a remote chance they can make the playoffs at that point, then they'll ride him week 16. Oh, for sure. Uh, If if, if, – well, what's Dallas' record right now? Let me uh, me take a look. Hang on in front of me. Five and four. So they're five and four right now. It's – too early to say, but I don't know. You really think you really think without Zeke they're going to be able to uh, make the playoffs or have it's a, gonna or, be, it's or be, gonna be tough. Spot? Yeah, they're going to be yeah. fighting for a wild card. Oh, for sure. I mean, unless the Eagles for some reason just tank, which it's been it's been seen before. It's been seen by the Eagles before. <laughs> been seen by the Bears before. Anyways, uh, so like we said, Alfred Morris, if he's out there, go get him. He shouldn't be, but. Go get him, and I 100% agree, drop Darren McFadden. Yep. And keep an eye on that Tyron Smith news. That is important because if uh, if he is playing, I think I'd be comfortable flexing Elmars. Well, let me look it up real quick. Hey, why don't we get a little confirmed ski? Tyron Smith news. As of six hours ago, he will not play. Ouch. Okay. That changes things. I, yes, it does. I will not start out from this week. Yeah, it'll be tough. That Eagles defense is no joke. Yeah. Well, we'll get more into that game uh, about some other players and stuff later on. Let's continue on with the news. The Bills are benching Tyrod Taylor and rookie Nathan Peterman will start this week against the Chargers. So what what do you think of this? I mean, because we saw Nate Peterman a little bit at the end of a blowout game. Led them to a touchdown. But, again, it was all in garbage time. So what? So how, what's what's going to be the outcome of this team? Like, what what are we going to be looking at here? I think this knocks everybody down. Really? Yep. I don't think the receivers. Kelvin Benjamin probably still going to be worth something, uh, but I think Lashawn McCoy. I don't really know if his is going to go up or not, even with a rookie quarterback, because I think teams will be able to stack the box a lot more. But he is going to have more work, so I can see well, him just staying about the same. I'll tell you what with. The last couple of weeks of performance uh, performances out of LeSean McCoy can't get any worse. You might you probably buy him cheap. You probably could at this point. Um, I know as an owner of him in one of my leagues, I'm getting pretty pretty disappointed. Uh, you know, he really caught he really hurt me a couple of weeks ago with that terrible terrible performance against the Jets. And you know, and what what boggles my mind is is that the Bills they stop using him when they fall behind. I don't understand. He's still your best playmaker. Right. Get him involved. Yep. And you know, I will say this, too. He's got one of the best schedules from here on out for a fantasy running back. So well, Chargers, the Chiefs, they haven't – they're sort of a shell of what they used to be. Patriots, Colts, Dolphins, Patriots, Dolphins. Yeah. I mean, listen to that schedule. I, the division rivalry games make me a little concerned because we know how those can be. They can – you know, the stats don't always match up. Right, but I uh, think when you have a guy like LaShawn McCoy <laughs> in that good of a matchup, yeah, there's, a be- uh, there's a better chance. Very true. Um, so, yeah, I mean, is there – you're not going to go try to sell Kelvin Benjamin at this point, are you? Because what are you no, gonna I don't think for? you're going to – you're not going to get much. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, and honestly, as of right now, I don't think he's worth trying to buy low either. Okay. Okay, fair enough. 
All right, well, then let's continue on. In other quarterback news, Jay Glazer reported that the Vikings were very tempted to start Teddy Bridgewater this week against the Rams. Dumb. Dumb. Very dumb. We've already talked about this, you know, a few weeks ago when there was mention of Teddy Bridgewater, you know, coming back and starting practicing. We said them switching to Teddy Bridgewater at this point would hurt everybody on that offense. In fact, that could hurt the entire team. Oh, yeah. It, this would be terrible. I mean, they're in first place in the division, and not all of that has to do with Case Keenum, but a good portion of that has to do with him. Teddy Bridgewater, first of all, he hasn't played in, what, two years? Right. This is a preseason injury two preseasons ago. And just <clears throat> he wasn't good as a quarterback then, 14 touchdowns when he played all 16. Case Keenum's doing way better. He's a better quarterback, and like you said, the offense – really works with him. I think Teddy Bridgewater would just ruin it. Yeah, I mean, think about what Teddy Bridgewater had when he got hurt. I mean, a rookie Stefan Diggs and Kyle, and Kyle, and Kyle Rudolph. Right. But now, I mean, Stefan Diggs is coming to his own. Kyle Rudolph, yeah, he's not what he was last year with Bradford, but he's still involved. And then he's of still course top you 10. got And then of course you got Adam Thielen, you know, who really had a breakout year. Yeah, so, he's been amazing. Right. So to, you know, with all that kind of new fresh face type or fresh use of talent, Teddy Bridgewater wouldn't be able to utilize that. Now, the only thing I will give Bridgewater is he's he's probably more athletic than Case Keenum considering he was able to use his legs the last time we had seen him. Yep. So, but uh, again, I mean, it's not like they have Dalvin Cook in the backfield anyway. So where do you think Adam Thielen is ranked in PPR right now? Total scoring. I know it's high. Uh, I I came across this the other day. I'm going to say, I don't remember the exact number. I'm going to say fourth. He's third. Third. Okay. Yeah. I, third. I, knew, I knew it was up there. Yeah. Do you know where Jarvis Landry is? Uh, I just got to talk be, about this some more for all the shit I got about having him 16. Jeez, you're like a woman. You know I know, man. I'm going to keep bringing this up. <laughs> Jarvis Landry and Zach Ertz, I'm not going to fucking gonna, stop listen, talking about these whoa, guys. Whoa, hold on. I'll give you the Jarvis Landry one, but I never said that Zach Ertz was crap. No, no, no. no. I'm, just, I'm just saying he's my guy. Oh, well, I'll give you Jarvis Landry at, like, what, seven? I was pushing for Ertz for, like, four rounds in, in that Scott Fish. Well, what's the draft. ranking for Landry? You didn't even say. I said seventh. Oh, uh, you said seven? Yeah. That, yep, that's exactly it. Oh, look at me. I'm so and he's old. leading the NFL in catches, too. I mean, shit. Can you blame him, though? Look at that team. They're terrible. They have to throw to Jarvis Landry, even to try. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, who, uh, but you know, you rather... you know, go ahead. But you know, what's, you know what is? It's because the team's bad that that's why he's getting those numbers. That last year, they were they were better than this, and they were, and he wasn't where he is this year, last year. That's true. So, so pray to God that we have Matt Moore again next year. <laughs> uh, you know, you mean Jay Cutler uh, or Jay Cutler? Uh, does it matter? Either I, one. Cut, Cutler you know? targeted Landry more than Moore did. Not that he didn't get targeted by Matt Moore. Anyways, though, let's move on. Anyway, yeah. Um, but just for you guys, uh, this Teddy Bridgewater news—it's not going to be a thing this week because Mike Zimmer did come out and say Case Keenum starting. They can't take him out based on the way he's been playing. I mean, they're seven two, seven and two team. So until something does change, keep starting your Vikings. Yep, absolutely. All right, so anyway, Philip Rivers is making progress in the concussion protocol. Anthony Lynn said he's expected to play. Like it really makes a difference. Yeah, not much of one. I mean, damn. How much has Keenan Allen fallen as far as what we expected of him for this season, especially if he stayed healthy, which he has for the most part, maybe a little banged up but still playing through it. He is just not looking like what we thought he would. No, it has been pretty disappointing. Yeah, because he's what uh, he's a wide receiver three right now. Yeah, right. Um, it's it's very disappointing, especially in PPR. We thought in PPR leagues he would. We thought he would probably be on the level of somewhere of like a Jarvis Landry. Oh yeah, I thought he was going to be top ten. I had him ranked number ten going into the season. Right. Uh, so that's that was bad. Uh, you know, I don't know. Man, his his draft stock is going to go way down for next season. Yeah. And I think that's awesome. Yeah, it could be a really great value. Because I will still, as of right now, draft him in the third round next year. <clears throat> wow. In the third yep. round still? Yep. What if they get a rookie quarterback? That'll change. 
Yeah, I because I could feel it. I think they will. Yeah, quite possibly. But anyways, I think it's uh, I think Rivers is. I think he's going to play too. Uh, you know, the matchup with the Bills, it's in LA that makes it that makes it a better matchup for the Chargers. Not by much, but then again, look at what the Bills have been doing the last couple of weeks, and they got a rookie quarterback coming in there. <sighs> We'll talk more about that game, I suppose, later on. Yep, we will. How about that? All right. Blaine Gabbert will start Week 11 for the Cardinals against the Texans. Cardinals are finalizing a deal to give Larry Fitzgerald a one-year extension, just to add some more Cardinals news in there, because I don't think we really planned on talking about Blaine Gabbert that much, did we? Uh, No, I didn't expect this to happen. I mean, Drew (laughs) Stanton hasn't been great, but he has – I mean, he's not been the worst in the league – but I, I'm kind of wondering if they're giving this uh, deal to Fitzgerald because they feel bad that his last season was going to be with Drew Stanton and Blaine Gabbert. Well, I mean, you know, what What bothers me is, I mean, I don't know why they weren't the ones that tried to trade up in the draft last year to get Patrick Mahomes. You know, like I felt like that would be a guy that that could have fit that system a little better, you know, for Arizona. Had a great running back before David Johnson got hurt. Larry Fitzgerald, a savvy veteran who could have really helped the quarterback develop. And even, and even young receivers that maybe he could have built some chemistry with. I mean, that's a guy I thought they really would have went after. Not that I'm saying Patrick Mahomes would be is going to be a great quarterback, but he could have sat behind Carson Palmer. And then, look, he could have actually started at this point in, this, in time, and maybe they wouldn't be going after trash like Blaine Gabbard or you know having to start guys like Drew Stanton. Yep. Absolutely. Did you see after Le'Veon Bell scored that touchdown, they played keep away? Yes, I, I <laughs> for did. the touchdown <laughs> celebration. Yeah. <laughs> it was what was it? Juju and Antonio Brown and Bell yeah. running back and forth. <laughs> well, what was the? Uh, well, did you see the Vikings uh, celebration last week? Leapfrog. Yes, that was ridiculous. <laughs> I'm so glad that the NFL is like, you know what? We're not going to crack down on celebration because yes. it's been a fun season. It that part of it has been fun. I can't say the whole season has been fun, but that part of it certainly has this season. I really can't wait for it to be over. <laughs> uh, all right, Bucks coach Dirk Cutter thinks James Winston will return this season. Whoa! Thanks, Dirk. What kind of name is Dirk? <laughs> it's German. <laughs> Sucks. <laughs> I don't anyway, know. I mean, what a what a lame like statement that is. He'll return this season. Okay, great. When? <laughs> Week 17. <laughs> yeah, right. When it doesn't matter. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I didn't really like how non-specific he Well, or maybe vague is a better way to... Well, listen, you got Mike Evans back this week, and you got Ryan Fitzpatrick as your quarterback. Yep, and we'll talk more about him later. Sure. All right. Mike McCarthy said Aaron Rodgers is making really good progress. Pick him up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go out and get him. He ain't starting this season. Uh, and Ty Montgomery did not practice on Thursday. I was actually being serious. Pick him up. <clears throat> Why? You think he's coming back this season? Yep. No. Yep, no I do. It's not happening. Would you rather pick up Aaron Rodgers or Josh Gordon? You can't say neither. Josh Gordon, because I think he's got a bigger chance of coming back this season than Aaron Rodgers. All right. I was just curious. Aaron Rodgers has a collarbone issue. Yeah, and... Really good progress is actually something I believe. Oh, just like I feel Dirk, like if it, well, I just feel like, like Dirk if it Cutter was, saying that that James Winston will return this season. No, I feel like if uh, if it was just coach speak, it would say making good progress. But I feel like the really good progress makes it like pretty optimistic. <laughs> so because it's really good progress. Yep, that's exactly right. Because <laughs> you said really good. <laughs> wow, look at you, really taking this one on a limb, huh? Yep, that's where I'm going with it. <laughs> Uh, I mean, listen, that even hurt my soul to say I'd rather have Josh Gordon because I have been so against people who think that Josh Gordon will be a thing, but you're just being ridiculous with this Aaron Rodgers nonsense. Uh, I still think he's got a chance to They're not making the play. They're not even going to sniff in the playoffs. So, but, but if he's good by week 14, you're telling me they're not going to play him the last four games of the season? <sighs> Not, I mean, not if they, not if they're not in a position to get in the playoffs. Why would they even? Why would they rush him back for nothing? Play spoiler. No, come on, come on. You're being ridiculous. All mm-hmm. right, you're being ridiculous. We're, they're not yeah, gonna we're rush. Ridiculous. They're not gonna rush the best player in their franchise right now 
No, I didn't say rush him. I'm saying if he's ready. I mean, if he's ready, sure, but, like, still, why even try? I think they will. If he's ready, I think they will. Well, I don't think he'll be back this season. Now, now, whether or not they should is a difference. Well, let's get into this news. Devontae Freeman, with a concussion, did not practice on Thursday. This is the second concussion this season, so don't be surprised if he misses this week. I'm expecting him not to play this week. Yeah, I'm really glad that a couple weeks ago, Mickey told me that Tevin Coleman was on the waivers in our Dash League. Because now <laughs> I get to start him this week. He does not know when to... Uh... I I wish he was on because I beat his ass last week and I wanted to... You know, man, did you squeeze one out. I thought you were going to lose. Jar- that Jarvis Landry touchdown, man. I helped. Killed helped it for a me. Lot. Helped a lot. And then, uh, of course, I went on to become 8-2 as well. The two were the only... Yeah, we're both eight and two in this league. We're both eight and two, but uh, I'm the one who beat John's team. Yeah, that's right. There's one nine and one team. So, how many uh, are you in any leagues where you're above eight and two? No way. I'm sorry. You're you're seven and three, buddy. You're not eight and two. Am I? Yeah. Oh, yep, yep. You're right. Uh, and John's team is a five points uh, ahead of me. Yeah. Are you in uh, any leagues where you have better than an eight and two record? No. Is that your best one? Yeah. You know, it's, you, know, you, know, you know what's my worst one? The Sleeper Wire League. No, I think I'm still like six and something. Huh. I haven't paid attention to that one, but I know in the beginning I got on a hot streak. So I, I know I haven't paid attention to that one in a while. I'm actually going gonna, gonna to pull it up right now. But my worst one is one of my freaking money leagues, of course, where I'm three and seven. Oh, you lost your money. Oh, yeah, big time. And you know what? Had- yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say I have one ten and zero, one nine and one, and two eight and twos. Wow, look at you! Yeah, and then I, then I have two seven and threes as well. So six of my twelve are seven and three or better, and none are below five hundred. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, it's I been a just, good season. I have just been having the shit of the shit matchups where I play the guys who get their best weeks the entire season. And it's against me. It, I love it really it. is. Keep it up. I, You're doing a great job. I hate it because how am I supposed to see like a credible fantasy football player here when I keep losing to shit luck? Yeah, don't worry about it. You were born with the one skill every manager needs to play fantasy football. Absolutely no skill playing real football. Not so good at catching. Imaginary catches. Imaginary touchdowns. Next up, an imaginary score with an imaginary woman. Good imagination. So crack open a nice cold Bud Light, oh swami of the sidelines. You may come in dead last, but you're always first with us. Mr. Fantasy Football Man. Oh, I'm playing Sleep in the Dash League. He has Cam Newton on a bye, and he also has Marcus Mariota on his bench. Well, he won't change it. Well, he can't change that. He'll have to pick up a quarterback. Well, he, oh, I'm saying, well, yeah, okay. But he's not going to change anything, I bet you. Yeah, probably not. Marcus Mariota's having a decent game. Should have started him then. Yeah, he should have. Uh, anyways, what we got next? Uh, yeah, see, okay. I just wanted to point out, Sleeper Wire League, I'm still 6-4. and four. Haven't watched, nice. ha- haven't paid attention to that league in like three weeks. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so, oh, that's why. So Jameis Winston is out. Maybe I can pick up a quarterback and still try. try. Oh, I have Jared Goff on my bench. Never mind, I'll just put him in. I'll put him in and try to beat Max this week because I can't stay. <laughs> you know yeah. we love you, man. Yeah, I'm going to try this week because I'm playing Max now. Now I feel like I have to. I've got... All right, so Julio Jones is limited on Thursday. Julio Jones is limited. Yeah, I know. You're trying to move us along. I get it. I hear you. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so Julio Jones limited. This is a usual thing. So, like, what's, you know. Yeah, I'm he's not sure. Play. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like he's gonna play. Yeah, I'm not concerned. Yeah. No, uh, I, I yeah, I, I think this was noteworthy because it's Julio Jones, but he is still gonna play. Agreed. All, All right. right, I just set up my lineup. I was going to lose to Max. Now I'm predicted to win. Well, that's good. Yeah, isn't that special? Boy, geez, we got a lot of freaking new stuff. Holy crap, you packed this out today. There's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> I guess Dolphins offensive coordinator Clyde Christensen said Damian Williams and Kenyon Drake will continue to split carries. I think this is good news for Damian Williams owners and bad news for Kenyon Drake owners. Because that means Williams is going to be getting the same amount of work but more touches in the passing game. But I don't even agree with that. 
I think Damian Williams is still the guy to have, especially in PPR, because this team's going to be playing from behind almost all the, every time. Yeah, I agree. It's Damian Williams. Yeah, there's no real reason to own Kenyon Drake because they're a bad team. Yep, exactly right. Exactly. All right, so Jordan Reed did not practice Wednesday. He had a setback last week and is considered a game-time decision. <laughs> Shocker. Yeah. A lot of Redskins news here. <laughs> yeah, uh, another Redskin news. Rob Kelly's been placed on IR, and Chris, Chris Thompson did not practice Thursday. Sounds like some Ajapira time. I tried to pick him up everywhere. I, I'm I'm really not excited though. I mean, if Thompson is out, I think he's a must start. I mean, listen, I understand what you're saying. I think that yes, he'll have the opportunity to go go off this week. But let's keep in mind, they're playing in New Orleans against a Saints team who's been playing so much better than what they were doing in the beginning of the season. I mean, that defense has just been, I don't know, like it's been something we've really never seen out of New Orleans. Oh, yeah, I agree their defense is good, but if he's the only guy, I think you have to start him. I don't know. I Start him, I mean, maybe as a flex. Yeah, I mean... I mean, you can put him anywhere. <laughs> you can put I, I, him just, as a running back or a flex. I'm just saying, like, I, I'm just saying, like, I'm not comfortable. Like, there's a lot of guys I'd probably want to start over Samajic. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm just saying I'd play. I'm more excited about him than you are, apparently. I am just because of the matchup. I like the opportunity he'll have, and I'm, I'm not, like, I think his floor will be higher this game because of the amount of work he should get, but I don't like his ceiling. I think he's got a low ceiling. Yeah, I guess I could see that. He scored a touchdown last time he was the starter, though, didn't he? I think he's got that chance again. Oh, gosh. Any any player on offense has a chance to score a touchdown. Well, yeah, true. <laughs> Anyways, as the starting running back, I think it's good. All right. Well, I, I definitely agree he should be owned. How about that? Well, we'll go there. Okay. In other tight end news, Zach Ertz with the hamstring once again practiced, so he should be fine this week. Your boy. Finally. Two straight weeks without Ertz was rough. Phew. Alshon Jeffrey was limited in practice on Thursday, but he says he'll play through it. And we Kinda say, like Julio Jones. yeah, and we say, you still play? <laughs> I mean, Alshon Jeffrey has been, he has not had great. the season, I, a great season? No, he's been great. Not a great season, like, you know, total, but he's been great recently. Yes, recently, finally. You know, it feels like he's finally coming on, but man, it took a while to get there. Yeah, he's looking at his stats until the last two games. He was basically every other game. Yeah. I mean, so do you think the trend continues this week? Yeah, I think so. I don't see why not. Well, we'll see. I certainly, uh, for you guys who have him, I certainly hope so, and I, I bet you do too because... I do love him in the playoffs too. Rams, Giants, Raiders. Yeah, it's a pretty good matchup right there. Yep. All right, guys, let's move along then and go to... Ron Rivera, who expects Greg Olson to return in Week 12 against the Jets after their bye week this week. But also, Curtis Samuel suffered ligament damage in his ankle during the Thursday night game and is out for the season. Yeah, so they get Greg Olson back, which, you know, would be very nice for that offense, great for Cam Newton. But I think it's about time that people start picking up Russell Shepard. With Samuel being out, Kelvin Benjamin being gone, it's basically Devin Funchess and Shepard right now. Yeah, uh... I think in deeper leagues, Shepard needs to be owned. I think in 12 team or less, I think it's uh, dependent on your roster. If you really need some wide receiver depth, grab him. That's about it. Yeah, and this is a decent week for some, you know, some starting wide receivers to be out. I mean, you got T.Y. Hilton, Robbie Anderson, Russell Shepard, <laughs> the great Russell Shepard, <laughs> I mean- Devin Funches. <laughs> Yeah, so guys that you were starting. The point so, is, you're saying pick up Russell Shepard on a week of guys are going to be out, but Russell Shepard himself is going to be out. <laughs> yeah, play him. <laughs> yeah, start start him this week. Yeah. <laughs> Professor Chris. <laughs> I guarantee you he's not going to give you negative points. That is a sleeper wire <laughs> endorsement if I've ever heard one. <laughs> he will not give you negative points. We guarantee it. <laughs> oh, man. All right, well, here's some exciting news. Danny Woodhead is expect- is expected to play this week. About time. <laughs> However, Ravens offensive coordinator Marty Morningweg, right? Is that how you say it? Morningweg? Yeah, yeah, that's how it's Morningweg. spelled, man. There it is. Said that Alex Collins will remain the team's featured back. 
even one Terrence West and Danny Woodhead. I don't think this is true. I think it's going to be Danny Woodhead. <clears throat> I agree that Danny Woodhead is going to eat into his work, but I think Alex Collins has earned enough of a role that he should still be relevant. I do think this is a star Alex Collins week, though, because it seems like he's one. He booms and then he severely busts every other week. I think a lot of players have that freaking so. This year. So by that pattern, he should be the number one running back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean uh, I. I really do expect Danny Woodhead to come back and take the majority of the work there until he uh, pulls his hamstring again. Yeah, exactly. Which will be this week. Um, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. Woodhead is great for this team because this team will be playing behind a lot. However, oh, baby. I won't even tell you what happened. You'll just have to wait and see. Man, I, lo- I love this. I love doing the show when the Thursday game is going and we can just, like, react to it. And you guys be like, wow, that was so last night. <laughs> but anyways, um... I just lost my train. Danny Woodhead. It's great on this team because you know the Ravens. They're going to be playing from behind just about every game they're in. I don't know about that. They've got a great defense. they got a good defense. I wouldn't say it's great. I'd Would you say good. it's really good? No, I'd stick to good. <laughs> there is a di- Hey, there is a difference between great and good. So you're not going to Mike McCarthy it? No, I'm not going to Mike McCarthy Man, we have Antonio Brown in the Sleeper Wire Pro-Am, and I am loving that. There it is, right? Did you like that catch off the helmet? Yep. I'm also playing against him, though, in a Ouch. in a league on Sleeper Bot, and the guy I'm playing against just sent me a message that says, I'm sorry, Professor. Oh. <laughs> mm, that you was right? brutal. Yeah, I'm just like, I feel you. Like, anybody who's going at, again, who has gone against Antonio Brown this week, I am just... Mm. It burns. Like, it burns me. It burns Oh, me. that helmet catch. Nice. Yeah, I, I said that to you. I know did you, you did. not listen to me? No. You didn't tell me what it was. I said, did you like that helmet catch? I wasn't listening. I know. See, because you don't listen. <laughs> Even though I'm the freaking host of the show, you don't listen. It oh. was very frustrating for me when we were doing that show when the Raiders were playing on Thursday night. And you and Mickey both, especially Mickey, just <laughs> freaking out about, oh. Every single time something Well, happened. Mickey was definitely playing homerism that night. I, mean, I know. Yeah, real bad. I know. But right, anyway. What have we got? All right. Yeah, so we don't got a whole lot left. At least we really got to get into game action. Uh, we got Chris Hogan did not practice Wednesday. Any news on if he practiced this week? Uh, I mean, uh, Thursday? I did not see anything, but I can check that. Okay. Just, uh, I mean, if he's not going to play this week, it's unfortunate but uh, I'm not seeing anything. Yeah, actually, last week I was telling people I don't think he's going to play for at least two weeks, and it's looking like that's true. Okay. I mean, having a shoulder injury and it's in a sling, that's not something you can bounce back from real quick. No. I mean, so who was the beneficiary from that in last week's Denver, you know, New England blowout? Um, I can't remember who it was last week. Week, uh, but I, I still think Danny Amendola is the one who has the highest chance to benefit. Yeah, I would agree with that. Danny Amendola should benefit the most. Um, you know, Deion Lewis is going to get more involved. These are guys that I, I would think would benefit the most with Chris Hogan's absence. Yeah, Rex Burkhead, too. Yeah, well, we can get into that in a little bit. We certainly will. Packers believe Ty Montgomery has a chance to play in Week 11 against the Ravens. Start Jamal I, Williams. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. I say he has no chance to play Week 11. Yeah, eight. So you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> woo! Then, woo! Bill O'Brien said that Will Fuller is expected to miss, miss Week 11 against the Cardinals. That's all right. Everybody sh- already dropped him. Yeah, somebody should have told Bill O'Brien. Tom Savage is starting, so we no longer need to worry about Will Fuller. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's concerned about fantasy. Yeah, right. Uh, and then last but not least, Hugh Jackson believes that Corey Coleman can handle a full workload in his return the, this week. He's been officially activated off the IR. Man, I got to tell you, I liked this kid last year. I thought he was going to do things, great things this year, and he had that unfortunate injury to the hand, the same one last year. Which I, I just, I don't know if that's a pattern to worry about or just complete freak thing. I'm leaning towards it's just a complete freak kind of situation. But I think he's very talented. What do you think? 
Yeah, I don't know how much this had to do with the original injury either. I'm hoping that it's just it happened to happen again. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I think he's someone he shouldn't be on any waiver wires, but I'm betting he probably still is. Let me look up his ownership, at least his Yahoo ownership. Wow, if you had to guess, what would you say? How many in the percentage of Yahoo leagues? Yeah, well, yeah, we'll just generalize. Uh, okay. Um, this I'm is just usually what I go by. It's the easiest I'm, to find. You know, I'm going to say I don't think that many people are really aware of Corey Coleman and what he has been capable of doing for that team when he's on the field. So I'm going to say he's still available in 35% of leagues. He is available in 69% of leagues. Wow. He's only 31% owned. Wow. Yeah. I mean, listen, I'm not going to sit here and tell you this guy's a wide receiver one must own, you know, or must start, and, you know, you're going to, he's going to win you your championship. I'm not here to say that, at least, yeah. No, <laughs> I'm not here to say that. But, but he needs to be rostered in every he, format. Right, because the guy has a ton of upside on yep. a team that you know is, even though they're bad, still don't have a victory this season. They're always playing from behind. They're always going to have to throw it. And this kid is their number one there when on the field. Yeah, it's. I think things are going to look good for him. Yeah, so do I. All right. Speaking of the Browns. <laughs> speaking of the Browns, right. We have done the news without Mickey. That means we no longer need me. So you get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. No. Uh, <laughs> I am just teasing. We... Cannot wait to get Mickey back with us next week. He uh, unfortunately had things scheduled week that he could not make the show. So we look forward to having him back with us next week, kind of. Um. <laughs> All right. So what's the first game we have to cover? Is it Jaguars oh, at Browns? Oh, damn. The, the two shittiest matchups of the week. Well, I mean, the like most lopsided matchup of the week, that's for sure. You know, you know what's funny is? I remember thinking not too long ago where we'd be like oh jaguars browns wow this is like a bathroom break game and now it's like jaguars browns kind of a bathroom break but like one of the teams is really good <laughs> i don't know if they're really good i think they've just played really bad teams do you really think that's what the jaguars have been doing this season i mean they smashed the steelers on the back of blake bortles that was also in london though wasn't it no that wasn't the London game? No, that was that was not the London game. The London game was the Jaguars and Ravens. Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah. I mean, I don't I don't know. Listen, I think I do I think that the Jaguars team has been a bit overrated this season as far as like the reaction to how good they've been? Yeah, a little. But I think th- there's no denying that defense and there's no denying that Leonard Fournette has made that team much scarier on offense, especially when that defense is so good, keeping play, you know teams from scoring. Oh yeah, I agree. Like that, yeah, I, they're they're good. I just don't, I don't think they're going to go anywhere in the playoffs. Oh no, I mean, I I can't say that either. I mean, until until Tom Brady's gone, it's the Patriots and the refs and the refs. Yeah, <laughs> until we have no more refereeing in a game. Well, and no, I'm, I'm saying they're always uh, on the Patriots side. Well. I mean, that seems to be kind of the case now, doesn't it? But, point Just is... Just ask Austin Safarian Jenkins. Oh, God, the guy can't have a catch break. Mm. So anyways, yeah, Leonard yeah. Fournette, auto start. Marquise Lee, I think, is going to be another solid play. Are you concerned with the threatening, though, to Leonard Fournette lately? Like, you're not going to get the start. You're going to lose work to Chris Ivory and TJ Yeldon. Does it concern you? No, not really. Not until we actually see it. Oh, I mean, we did see it the one game. Last minute, they said, you know, he wasn't a st- he wasn't their starter. Well, that was the, for the discipline. Yeah, but that's what I mean is, like, it seems, I don't, I don't, you know, they seem to be, something's going on there where they're just, like, you know, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not liking the situation for Fournette, really, where okay, Jaguars trade him to the already, Colts. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I mean, they just need an offensive line and a defense. But, yeah, trade him to the Colts. Uh <laughs> Yeah, you're going to start Leonard Fournette. You're going to start Marquise Lee. I feel really good about what Marquise Lee has been doing. Yep. He, is their, he is their wide receiver one. Can't, can't deny starting him. Um, and then for the Browns, I mean, Corey Coleman's supposed to play this week, right? Yes. 
I don't like the matchup, but there's some pretty good wide receivers that are out on bye. Might have to. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I totally agree. Might have to. Yeah. I mean, I, and, and let me just rephrase. I wouldn't say really good. I mean, there's a couple of good wide receivers, a bunch, because I'm thinking about it now. I mean, the Jets on bye. Sure, Robbie Anders, 49ers. Pierre Garçon's out for the year anyway. Does it matter? Devin Funches, and then T.Y. Hilton, who's just been up and down this season as as it is anyways. So, yeah, just a couple. But I yeah. digress. <laughs> uh, Duke Johnson, I think, also is a must-start as well. Yep, I agree. So what do you think? Who's 49? Uh, Brown's going to get the first one? No, not a chance. I, think so. <laughs> I don't know if right. the Browns will ever get their first win. Really? You don't think they'll You think they'll go 0-16 this year? I think there's a good chance. They're well, well on their way. Yeah, but we said that last year. Wouldn't fit. Well, they can't get lucky twice. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, hear, you heard it here fo- first, folks. All right, Buccaneers at Dolphins. The Hurricane Bowl. Since yep. this game was supposed to be played week one. It never did. Next to a dumb hurricane. Yeah, we had too many of them. All in a yeah. Row. yeah, it was uh, crazy the beginning of the season, you know? Yeah, for sure. But let's talk about this week. So we already mentioned... Fitzpatrick is going to be starting this week. Mike Evans will be back for you this week. You know, we saw Deshaun Jackson benefit from with the uh, with his absence. What do you finish with? I believe four catches, sixty-five yards, if I'm not mistaken. I thought it was a little bit better than that. Was it? Maybe it was. I remember at one point seeing that last week. Uh, I, I think have... it was more. Oh. I'm getting the numbers up in front of me. Hold on. Six for eighty-two. Okay, right. So at some point he had four for. 65, but yeah, 6 for 82. So not a bad week, especially in PPR. Not not a bad week if you had to start him. You know, maybe maybe decided, well, you know, Mike Evans is out. I got, you know, just picked up Deshaun Jackson. Paid off. Uh, can we, can we, can you start Deshaun Jackson, though, again this week? I feel like not really. I mean, I think you can. The Dolphins are not good. The Dolphins are not good, but these Tampa Bay Buccaneers aren't really that good. No, but I think Deshaun Jackson... In the right matchup is a good play, and this is a good matchup. Even with Fitzpatrick, I mean, he showed some good things out there. True. Yeah, I, I guess if you need to, you know, maybe if you want to flex him out there, go ahead. Let's talk about Doug Martin and how disappointing Ugh. he's been. Do we have to? I, I mean, you wanted him a couple weeks ago to trade. I should have just given him to you. I know. I was so <laughs> – I am so glad we made that trade the way we did. <laughs> and for me, it doesn't matter. I'm still 8-2 and, and have a deep running back roster, so it's a – if you guys uh, weren't listening at the time or happened to miss it, I traded my T.Y. Hilton for his Jarek McKinnon. Let me ask you, were you really mad when T.Y. Hilton got that two-touchdown game? No, because I had him in a few other leagues that I was playing him in. Okay. It just was funny. Like, you trade him away when he was doing nothing, really, and then I get him and he gets two touchdowns. But then no, got- because you know, I'm a Colts fan. I love seeing him get two touchdowns. Actually, something similar happened to me last year. I'm in a league where you get a half point for every rushing attempt. So, you know, guys who get volume are pretty valuable. So I had uh, – I w- really wanted Lamar Miller because he was getting a ton of work. And I traded Julio and Inunua for Lamar Miller and Golden Tate. And then the next weekend, that's when Julio had 300 receiving yards. <laughs> oh, man. But well, it of- ended up – Golden Tate – this was like when he was shitty through five games, and then he killed it the rest of the season. Yeah, I remember that. So that was a great trade. Yeah, I mean, those moves always are, you're you like, instinctively at first, you're like, oh, what the hell was I thinking? And then most of the times they... Yep. It hurt to get rid of Julio, but I think it was worth it. I lost did to... Did you win? I lost in the championship to yeah. a guy who has David Johnson, Le'Veon Bell, and I only lost by 12 points. Ouch. So I was close. Yeah. Jeez. All right, so we got the Tampa Bay co- side covered. Well, we kind of talked about Doug Martin. Should uh, should people start benching Doug Martin? I don't know. It's this is it's such a hard player to gauge because I feel like he can have a hundred and thirty with two touchdown game easily, but we just haven't seen like he had a good game his first game back, but just hasn't really done much since and got benched. I still think. He's playable, but he's not exciting. Yeah. Um, I think that this week is really, to me, a prove it kind of week. Like, I'm going to, like, I'll start him this week, but I think that this is kind of it for, as an owner. You, he, this matchup should be a good one for him to get something going. And if he really can't, I don't know. 
Uh, yeah, I, I it should be a good one. Should be. I feel like the Buccaneers can get ahead in this game, and if they do, then Doug Martin should be having a great game. Yeah, I agree. So as far as the Dolphins are concerned, you're starting your Jarvis Landry, you're starting your Devontae Parker, and I think of the running backs, as we talked about earlier, you're only starting Damian Williams. No, I still think a lot of people would say Kenyon Drake. I hear a lot of other fantasy analysts say Damian Williams sucks and why don't they just give the ball to Kenyon Drake all the time? But I'm not sure I agree with that. Of course, I'm more of a PPR guy than a standard guy. I, I mean, I don't know. Just I think Damian Williams is the guy. I'm not saying because he's talented. I'm saying because they seem to that seems to be the guy they give the ball to. Yeah, I can see that. All right, our next matchup here. Let's talk about Jarvis Landry, though. Yeah, let's not. Uh, Ra- Ravens. so good. He's Ravens. already matched his season, his oh, career God. season high in touchdowns. Having a great season, man. Having a great season. Oh, well, shut the fuck up. Oh, uh, you done? <laughs> Listen, the fans don't want to hear about the players they already know are great. They want to know who's going to be the next great player so that they can get an edge on the competition. They're not getting an edge by listening to you blur- blabber and brag about Jarvis Landry. Well, a good thing we don't have any great players in this next matchup. Well, that's for sure. Ravens at Packers. Although Jamal Williams, you know, it might be with the opportunity, he might he might be able to get you some good points this week if you ever pick him up off waivers. Yeah, but he's not a great player. This is just an no. opportunity. True. I mean, just like uh, who we were talking about earlier. Who who did we mention that that's going to get the opportunity? Oh, uh, Samaj P. Ryan. Yep. Right. So yeah, listen. I mean, I think I think he flexed Jamal Williams this week, especially. You know, if it's all but conf- – I think it's all but confirmed that Ty Montgomery doesn't play this week, and we already know Aaron Jones is out for this, you know, I think for what, the season or – Three to three six weeks. weeks. Three to six weeks, right. Okay, yeah. I didn't think it was for the season. Um, Alex Collins. And he's 100% droppable. Aaron Jones? Yeah, because even if he – the minimum is three weeks, so then he's coming back week 14, and I, I'm, you're not going to want a guy who's coming off an MCL issue – in your fantasy playoffs and happen to rely on him. Yeah. And if it's six weeks, he's missing the fantasy championship. So he's not worth anything then anyway. Exactly. So, so I think, yeah, 100% you can drop Aaron Jones. It's a shame, too. I mean, he really was picking up steam, seemed to really carve out the role for himself, make himself fantasy relevant. Uh, he's going to be an interesting guy to talk about uh, during the off season and leading into next season. Yep. But we're talking about week 11 of this season. And in this game... I mean, you're going to start Jordy Nelson, who has been pretty lackluster since the Brett Hundley takeover. Um, you're going to start your Randall Cobb? No, I don't think I would. No, uh, but you can start Devontae Adams, apparently. Yeah. Yeah, he does like, Brett Hundley does like Devontae Adams. So if you have Devontae, you're in pretty good shape right now. They must have had, you remember a couple seasons ago when Devontae Adams was dropping every pass? Yeah, man. I'm uh, guessing I, maybe maybe Hunley developed some sort of like second string chemistry with him. I that's what it looks like to me because Devontae Adams looks like a completely different guy than what we saw a couple of years ago. Because I yeah. really thought last year was pretty fluky of Devontae Adams considering what we had seen. But I don't know, man. Maybe maybe he is starting to finally get it in learning how to be a better receiver. Yeah, well. It, you know, fourth year, I would assume he'd be good by <laughs> good with it by now. Uh, well, you, you always yeah. think so. Yeah, he is. Yeah. I mean, if I had to pick a favorite Packers receiver for fantasy, it would have to be him. Well, then there you go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so this week, you're going to start Devontae Adams, Jordy Nelson, and Jamal Jeremy Williams. Macklin. Jeremy Macklin for the Ravens side, you're going to start him. Yep. Until he, uh, you know, starts busting again, and then he won't get you any more points. Yep. <laughs> I'm and still on the Jeremy Macklin. I know, but it's just it's like like just like a lot of players this year. Every other week. Every other week. Yep. What what about uh let's talk about the backfield here. We mentioned Danny Woodhead gonna be back. So do you think you can't you well you mentioned this should still be an Alex Collins week, correct? Um yeah, I was more making a joke about how it's every other week it's him and Buck Allen. Mm-hmm. But if Woodhead is playing, I still think Alex Collins will get the majority of the work this week. They might they might work Woodhead back in slowly, but then after that, I would have Woodhead in way before anybody else there. I agree. I think that this week is still going to be an Alex Collins week. 
And I think that's all the guys you're really going to start in this game. Yep. So let's move on to Lions at Bears. Boy, the Bears. Should have got it done last week. Should have, could have, would have. Yeah, I was pretty pissed off about that one. Especially against some rookie, you know, not rookie, but like, you know what I'm saying. Not Aaron Rodgers running the Packers. Should have, should have done better. They were the better... They should have been the better team, but they couldn't get it done. It's very disappointing. But let's talk about the fantasy relevant players. So the Bears, you still have Jordan Howard, and that's who, it. Yeah, you, who's been getting an impressive amount of work, just is not finding the end zone because the offense has been terrible. So I mean, he's got four touchdowns, seven hundred and sixteen rushing yards on one hundred and seventy-seven carries. It's pretty good. Yeah, workload's great. Just need the touchdowns. Yep. But uh, uh, and, and at this point, Tariq Cohen's completely cuttable. Um, oh, he's he been that way for five weeks. Yeah, I mean, it just you know, at this point, I'm just saying for the people out there who may have been, you know, holding out hope or waiting to see maybe he, you know, something will happen. He's cuttable. I mean, he's, yeah, uh, I, I still see questions like Marshawn Lynch or Tariq Cohen, and I was like, <laughs> why do you still have him? And even if you do, why is that a question? I mean, like. Here's the thing, Tariq Cohen. He could be really fantasy relevant if with Mike Bears, Clinton. I, I I don't think just with Mike Clinton. I think if if he could be if they could make more roles for him. I mean, because here's the thing, Tariq Cohen. I think was only fantasy relevant because people hadn't seen what he can do. Because Bears Mike were Glenn. hiding that. What <laughs> I said because Mike Glennon threw to. Are you done? Have you yeah. had enough? Because this, this is nonsense about the Mike Glennon thing. It's not like Mike Glennon. He has not done shit since Mitch Trubisky came in. Okay, that doesn't mean that Mike Glennon's a better quarterback. No, I'm saying Mike Glennon targeted him, and Trubisky doesn't. Well, that's true, but yeah, I also that's what think. I'm saying, well, so. well I, I think I think it's part of the game script, though, too. Like I think it's his coaches. Oh. Another issue too is that Benny Cunningham has been getting more and more involved. Yes, exactly that too. You know, so they're working in Benny Cunningham with Cohen with Howard. You know, so it's. It's really kind of a, I mean, Howard's definitely getting the work. Do they but, just, do they just want Benny Cunningham out there, like, because uh, so, he's a better blocker for a rookie quarterback? That's my thought. I think, and, and I mean, let's remember, Tree Cohen's five six. He's not going to be the, <laughs> you know, he's, that's the thing. He's not going to be a great blocker. I think it's funny when they run like that. Uh, he crouches down behind the offensive <laughs> line so no, so nobody can see him. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that's that's the thing though is he's a he's a trick player you know he's not gonna be he's a Darren Sproles yeah that's he, no that's a, that's a perfect comparison uh, a Darren Sproles without the consistent usage exactly and I think one I think maybe next season we could be talking about how you know depending on who the new coaching staff will be maybe they'll start to use Cohen next year as the, that kind of guy and depending they could be the, the new quarterback is no. They're not changing quarterback next year. <laughs> you don't invest in a guy just to give him one year. We're not the Browns. That's okay. true. <laughs> All right. So, as I mentioned, Jordan Howard, that's really it. Kendall Wright as a flex is not terrible, but it's very boomer bust. Because he's yep. definitely gotten his workload. You know, it seems to be a reliable target for Trubisky when he does throw. But... It's an extremely risky flex play. Now let's head over to the Lions side. You start your Golden Tate. Absolutely. Right. And you start him every week. But he's matchup proof. Now, the other guys are pretty questionable because we did mention Bears defense is better than what the stats have shown. It's a division rivalry game. Bears do play better at home. And they play the they play the division rivals aside from the Packers very well. They do. They do that. Unless Aaron Rodgers plays for the Packers. Um, they do. So Here's the thing. There's some guys here I'm pretty questionable about. Like, like, let's start with Amir Abdullah. Do you start Amir Abdullah this week? I think so. I don't like him, but I think you can start him. I don't like him either, and I don't. I don't think that. I don't think he's going to get you much. He might fall into the end zone and save your day. With, uh, you know, I could see maybe maybe a st- stat line like last week. You know, 50 yards and a touchdown. I could see that, and wouldn't be bad. But that's about I think his, his ceiling for me in this kind yeah. of game. Golden Tate is the only guy I'd be excited about playing. I'm excited about playing him every single week. Do you know where he's ranked in PPR right now? Question again. Uh, I, sorry, I just like stats. I especially know. Especially PPR stats. I'm going to say nine. Number six. 
I'm gonna look at you. him and your boy Jarvis Landry could basically be going uh, going out holding hands with each other. Those numbers. Absolutely, I would love it. What about Matt Stafford? Uh, I mean, if he's if he's a quarterback, you're definitely not going to stream someone over him. It's not the Seahawks or yeah, but you know what? That's you know what's funny is everybody said the Bears secondary is a big weakness. I think they've been a better bigger strength than people thought. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would still start. Matthew Stafford, if I didn't have any other options. Matthew Stafford or Joe Flacco? Oh, Stafford. Easily. Uh, what about Matthew Stafford or Jared Goff? Um, I would take Stafford. Wow. Matthew Stafford or Ben Roethlisberger? Well, it's hard to make that call. <laughs> Big Ben, because we know what's happened tonight. <laughs> uh, one more. Ba- uh, Matthew Stafford or Alex Smith? Alex Smith. There you go. All right, let's move along to another game because that's all your really fantasy relevant players. Oh, uh, Eric Ebron, yay or nay? Nay. Nay. Okay, Rams at Vikings, speaking of Jared Goff. Uh, this Goff would be a good one. Should be. Goff has been on fire a couple games, uh, but this is also going to be Case Keenum's revenge game. So yeah. Coming <laughs> off a four-touchdown game, too. Yeah, so uh, this should be an exciting one. What do you think of Goff this week? I think you have to keep playing him. I mean, they're the number one offense in the league. The Vikings, they do have a great defense, but they're going to be, you know, they also have a great offense. I think this is going to, has a much better chance of being a high scoring game than a defensive game. Yeah, I think so. I can see that. Uh, What about, uh, so, so who benefits? I mean, you got to keep at this point, Robert Woods, every week starter. Yeah, I still, I'm not buying into that, that he is an every week start. I mean, look because at the numbers. I do think, I, yeah, I, I trust me, I know the numbers. Well, okay, but, but how could you sit there and tell me that he's not an every week starter? Well, let me... Is it because his name is Robert Woods? Is that what bothers you? It is kind of a boring name, but that's not what bothers <laughs> <laughs> does, does it? Well, does it bother you that the fact that he's really done nothing his whole career and then finally he's doing something? No, it, it, I'm not bothered are you by jealous? Him. Are you jealous of his success? <laughs> yeah. Is it a statistical anomaly to you? You fi- you figured out what it was. <laughs> I mean, look, six hundred twenty-two yards off thirty-nine catches, four touchdowns. Uh, I mean, let's let's look back at the last uh, few weeks, okay? I mean, you know, even on weeks like the last two weeks, he's been insanely productive. You know, eight catches, one hundred seventy-one yards, and two touchdowns last week. Four catches, seventy yards, two touchdowns the week before. But then even looking before the bye week, you know, in a PPR setting. You're still getting great value out of him. Five for 59, five for 70, five for 66. And then he had one bad week. He's he's had really two bad weeks this entire season. His third lowest score in PPR formats would be eight uh, eight points. But, you know, three for 53 and then six for 108 the uh, two weeks after that. You know, so, I mean, really, a lot of his stats have been pretty good. Oh, no, yeah, he's been really consistent, don't get me wrong. But I actually, I have him uh, in a league, and I was struggling to put him in. And I think these are three good names. So I'll give you I'll give you a would-you-rather. Golden Tate or Robert Woods? Golden Tate. Stephon Diggs or Woods? I'd have to pull up Stephon Diggs in front of me. Oh, he's been great. I mean, I know he's been <laughs> great this season, but but I, I don't know. I mean, has he been that consistent? Because Robert Woods has been really consistent. Um, four of, I mean, he said four good games. What this about in the, in the, yeah, because, well, I mean, he was injured for three of them. Okay. I mean, I mean I my, my, my yeah. third guy, Sterling Shepard. Uh, I'd start Robert Woods over Sterling Shepard. Or yeah. Juju. Uh, Robert Woods over Juju. Okay. Yeah. I, I think Robert Woods is up there with guys like Golden Tate and Stefan Diggs. So I should put Woods in over Shepard in my flex. Even though Shepard is the only guy there, and he gets targeted like crazy. Yep, because right. Jared Goff treats Robert Woods like he's the only guy, basically. All right. I mean, granted, he does have my boy, Cooper Cup, to throw to as well. Cooper Coop? Does th- yeah, Cooper Coop. <laughs> <laughs> he does throw to him a lot. But let's be – I mean, you just said it yourself. They are the number one scoring offense. How can you not start a piece of that offense unless their name is Sammy Watkins? I think you can still start Sammy Watkins. I think he's not lately. I mean, what, because one game? No, he's had a couple good ones in a row, hasn't he? I think he only had the one game. I will, no, uh, he, had, he had one for 67 and a touchdown in week nine, two for 41 and a touchdown in week 10. Ooh, one for 67. One. Get you a touchdown. 
Yeah, he's the next Will Fuller. Watch out. <laughs> I mean... You heard it only... here first. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, but that kind of inconsistency, gross. I don't want that. I don't, you know... I mean, come on. You even have to admit, like, that's just... It's, that's just nasty, statistically. Would you play Sammy Watkins or Deshaun Jackson? The guy I hate. Uh, I, I'd have to go with Deshaun Jackson. All right. There we go. We can move on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen, I just think, I just think, unfortunately, like, I think Sammy Watkins is talented, but he's not Jared's guys. Robert Woods and Cooper Cup are his boys. Hell, they showed a whole thing on Sunday about how Jared Goff and Cooper Cup live together. They're roommates. Yeah. So, I mean, how, how, you know, you can't build chemistry if you're not hanging out with the guy. But, uh, yeah, so you're going to start Robert Woods. You're going to start Cooper Cup as the flex. And you're going to start your Jerk McKinnon, your Adam Thiel, and your Stefan Diggs and Kyle Rudolph. What about Latavius Murray? I think he is flexible. Okay. Maybe maybe flexible in a standard league because he's still getting the work. I'd still much rather have Jerk McKinnon in all formats, though. Agreed. He's the guy I'd rather have, too. I'm still loving that Hilton for McKinnon trade. I think I think both guys are great. It's just great. Just all around great. All right. <laughs> all right. Here's Man, another shit game. We have so many games we gotta pick Eight up. Eight games. Whew. Let's do it. Well, you know what'll happen is we'll go too fast and then we'll be like, Wow, thirty minutes left in the show. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Cardinals at Texans. Oh God. You know what's funny is like you thought beginning of the season. You know, after the first few weeks or so, you're like, man, this game could have been good. Like, imagine David Johnson still in this. Deshaun Watson still in this game. You know, even Carson Palmer is the quarterback in this game. Like, this game could have been really freaking good. And now look what we Tom yeah, Savage the versus Blaine. Playoffs. Yeah, yeah, Tom Savage versus Blaine Gabbert. Ooh, I mean, it's awful. And then an aging Adrian Peterson who – only showed one week that he could do something like something that he used to, and now he's back to his old garbage self. No, I think he bounces back. Do you really? You really yeah. think he can bounce back? I don't think he's getting 37 carries for 150 some yards. No, but I think he won't go two for 29 or 20, 21 for 29 yards. Is that what it was? Yeah, yeah. I don't think that's happening. Oh God, I certainly hope not because. He should be better than that. I mean, it's not like the Cardinals have a lot to help him out, but I mean, still, you would expect somebody of that caliber to do more with that kind of workload. Yeah, and I think he will this. We'll see. So, you think you could start him though this week? I think so. Yeah, Blaine Gabbard in there. I think he can start him. Oh God, that means they're definitely going to stack the box on Adrian, or they'll have to lean on the run. But at the same time, like AP has run against stack boxes his entire career. Yeah, but at this age, though, I don't know if he can, like, you know, get around it. I, maybe we'll, this will be our chance to see. Perhaps so. Oh, my gosh. You know what I just saw on my television screen? Uh, naked lady. It's football. Uh, uh, I just realized ne- next Thursday, Thanksgiving night, the night game is the Giants at Redskins. Oh, oh, that is a putrid game. For Thanksgiving. Yeah, but I feel like the Thanksgiving day games are better. Yeah, but like, did, like you know, you're ending Thanksgiving after all the things you're doing. I mean, because think about it. Yeah, you're going to have the day games on. And sure, you're going to watch a lot of it. But, you know, you're going to be interacting with family. And, you know, then you got dinner for around the 4 o'clock game. And then, you know, and then to relax after all that stuff that you did. You got to sit and watch the freaking Giants play the Redskins. Well, I mean, think about what at the beginning of the season you would have said, okay, Kirk Cousins, Terrell Pryor now on a great offense, Jordan Reed, Jamison Crowder. You know, this is going to be a great team. And then, you know, we got the Giants, Odell Beckham, and Brandon Marshall coming in to help out that offense. And Eli's going to have a career year. And you now this game would have had a lot of hype at the beginning of the season. I think the NFL should be allowed to change the schedule when needed. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I really think that. They should be able to change it with enough time, granted. I mean, you know, and if they had seen three weeks into the season what this game was going to become, I would have been like, okay, what games do we have that week? They should change, it, change, to, one? change it to primetime games are announced like the Tuesday of each week. 
Uh, that's a little. That's a little much. Yeah, you'll have nearly a full week to prepare. <coughs> yeah, Th- Thursday nights can be two weeks. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I really think primetime games should be able to get changed out. I mean, there's. Yeah. I, I mean, look, even uh, you know, what was it? I think we had Dolphins Raiders that Sunday night game. And I totally wanted to see Dallas versus Kansas City as the night game much more. It yeah, ended up 100%. being a good game. Yeah, it ended up being a good game, too. So, yikes. Shame on you, NFL. Fix yourself. <laughs> um, so, anyways, DeAndre Hopkins still looks like a beast, despite Tom Savage being the starter. So, it really was just Brock Osweiler last year. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, another thing, too, is you're probably going to end up starting Lamar Miller, but... Really, I can't, I can't think of anybody else I'd rather I'd like I'd start in this game. I mean, Larry Fitzgerald, of course, but really, any anything else? Bruce Ellington is a sneaky DFS play with okay. Will Fuller out. All right, so let's move along then to our next game. Speaking of the G-Men, Chiefs at the Giants. Start your Chiefs. Everyone. <laughs> what you know? We have to address the uh, elephant in the room here. And uh, what's what's been up with Kareem Hunt? I mean, he really. You know, I know they were on by obviously last week, but really before that, he wasn't getting the workload we saw earlier on this season. And maybe we thought, oh, well, maybe it's just, you know, of course, we've got to see. He, he wasn't going to hit that every week, but now it's been quite a while since we've seen him have a big game. Yeah, he hasn't scored a touchdown since week three. Yeah. And he had he had an okay game week seven at Oakland where he had eighteen for eighty seven, but then twenty two for forty six and week nine nine for thirty seven. I think this is going to be a great game for him to turn it around on for sure against the Giants. I think he's going to have an awesome game, but it, you know just the touchdowns haven't been there, and that's what you want to see. Exactly. So I, I'm certainly hoping that he can uh, turn it around because I still think he's talented. I think. Uh, He's no doubt earned the role for next season as the starter. 100%. We still, yeah, we won't be talking about Spencer Ware or the split or whatever. If the coach didn't bring that up, we'll know it's complete bullshit. So there you go. Uh, in regards to Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, you're going to start them. Although I will tell you, Tyreek Hill has had been one of those players that we just keep mentioning is every other week. You know, every other week he has a big game or a down game. I mean, his. Don't get me wrong. His big games are big games, but like those not big games. Yeah, are, for uh, sure. Yeah. You know what? Can you think of any other team for like like fantasy football wise, even like going back years, where quarterback, running back, wide receiver, and tight end all were in the top ten? Mm. I mean, you you could argue Big Ben, Le'Veon Bell, and Antonio Brown, but then you wouldn't oh, yeah. have the tight end. Right, because I was going to say Heath Miller and certainly Jesse James have never been in the top 10, at least in the same year that they were. Right. Uh, I'm trying to think. I mean, I think the Cowboys could do it. Not this a te- year. A team that could do it? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think the Rams have potentially do it once they find whoever their their true receiver is, their guy, and, and tight they end. Tight end more. Right, well, I mean, they do it. Did draft the guy Gerald Everett this year, so maybe if they get him going for next season, you know, maybe the guy develops uh, after this year and gets better for next season. So maybe Adam said Seattle with Marshawn Lynch, Jimmy Graham, Russell Wilson. Yeah, but Marshawn but was... Lynch and Jimmy Graham weren't on the same team that year. Well, they're on the same team one year. Were they? I thought Jimmy Graham came after Marshawn Lynch retired. No, um, no, he he tore his patella the year before. Okay, so they weren't top ten though that in that same year. Right, 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 right. And I, I think that that was pre Doug Baldwin too. So it was three guys. But yeah, I all four of those guys are going to finish or on pace to finish top ten. And I can't think of any other team that has actually done that. No, it's pretty impressive. No. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, it, it truly. I mean, the Chiefs have been, <coughs> excuse me, have been a really impressive team this year offensively. But they're starting to slow down a little bit, so they gotta they gotta come back. You know, they gotta pick it back up. They this has to be their game where they say, "Hey, which, that wasn't just a fluke in the beginning of the season. We're still here. You know, let's let's kick it up." Because you know they lost to Dallas. Um, you know they they're they're six and three now. They're not the 
six and one or you know or or five and one team they were at one point. Right. As far as the Giants are concerned, I still like Orleans Darkwood in this matchup. Yep, me too. I think he'll be involved. I think he's a guy you can flex out there. Um, and as you mentioned, I mean, they're going to throw to Sterling Shepard and they're going to throw to Evan Engram because they'll probably be playing from behind. So yep. Couldn't agree more. Yeah, and I think that's all I've got for that matchup. All right, so let's move on to the next matchup. Redskins at Saints. So we talked about this one a little bit before. I mentioned I, I don't really love Samaj P. Ryan the way you do, especially with Chris Thompson and Rob Kelly, you know, both being out. Or at least the potential for Chris Thompson to be out. I just think that, I don't know. I, like I mentioned before, I'm not going to get really into it again. Saints defense is better than we had thought in the beginning of the season. And that's why I don't like Samaj P. Ryan. But what about this, the Saints receivers against Josh Norman? Does Michael Thomas still have a good game this week? I think so. Why? I mean, he's, he's, just, he's flat out bigger than Josh Norman. Yeah, he's going to get that jump ball. That doesn't stop Josh Norman. I. Uh, yeah, Michael Thomas is about as big as they get. Yeah, he's a big boy. And he's still going to get his targets. Ted Ginn, I think, could be a good play if you're looking for a wide receiver. But I, it's time we call the Saints a running team. Yeah, unfortunately, I agree, which is really dumb because I hate it. I hate it because I'm a Michael Thomas owner in just about every league. Yeah, I actually don't have him in any, and I'm kind of happy about it. Yeah, I really wish I weren't so high on – I would, I wish I weren't as high on Michael Thomas as I was, but I thought of the Saints as the old Saints, not this new running game with Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara-type system they're going with that just completely disgusts me because I own none of them on my team, so I'm pretty un, you know, sad and – and Last hard. week I played against a guy who started both Ingram and Kamara against me. <laughs> I bet you looked at him in, before that game and was like, what is this guy thinking? No, nah, maybe maybe three or four or five weeks ago I would have thought that, but I probably would have done the exact same thing. Yeah. Like, this is a better tandem than Freeman-Coleman was. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, just because they're both seeing the end zone because Drew Brees doesn't throw touchdowns anymore. And for the second straight week, they're both ranked in the top ten. Can you call Drew Brees droppable? No. Why? Because he's Drew Brees and he'll still have good games for you. But, I mean, let's look at the numbers for this season. I mean, what has he really done? Yeah, no, I, I get it, but I still, I'm still, i still never, ever going to drop Drew Brees. Because of the name? No, because of how good he is. I mean, but he's not good this year. Yeah, but he still is a great quarterback. But so no, well, because, it's, no, I'm not even going to try to justify why I'm keeping Drew Brees. He's an elite quarterback. He's just – He was an elite. He still is an elite quarterback. They're just a running team. I, I don't think they're droppable, though. I th- Both of the running backs are pass-catching backs. I, I you know, there's well, no you way can't, you can Well, you can't Brees. start Drew Brees. Bullshit. Really? I mean – Oh, 100, yeah. 184 yards passing, zero touchdowns last week. That's good. Against in a, a game they really blew good out. Bills defense in a game where they but they blew the Bills out. How is that a good defense? Right, because you know, they have a good passing defense. But the run was working. Why go away from the run if the run's working? They had no reason to throw the ball. Okay, not one. I mean, I mean against Chicago, he had two hundred ninety nine passing yards, zero touchdown. Yeah. Okay, you drop Drew Brees if you want to. I am never going to advise someone to do that. But maybe dropping is is extreme. But. I, I can't say I'd start Drew Brees at this point. Against because, the Redskins? Yeah, because they're probably going to run it on him. We just said they're a run team. Yeah, but that doesn't mean you stop. You don't play Drew Brees. I'd rather start Matthew Stafford over Drew Brees this week. Mm, that, that's a big call. I wouldn't take it. rather start Jared Goff over Drew Brees. Nope. rather start Alex Smith over Drew Brees. Mm, I could see it. rather start Dak Prescott over Drew Brees. Uh, yeah, maybe. We have <laughs> Drew Brees ranked number five this week. See, but... You know, looking at his numbers, I think we need to change that because he has not been he has not been a top five quarterback you're, this year. You're right; he has not been. That doesn't mean he's still not capable of doing that. I agree; he has the potential, but the potential is not there, and simply because we've seen that the system has completely changed. It's not it's not an environment that breeds the elite Drew Brees anymore. That's what I'm saying. Like, like I understand where you're coming from. I understand that Drew Brees at one point. You know, up until probably last season, of course, was considered an elite quarterback because he's always put up four thousand, you know, four thousand five hundred, you know, uh, yards and uh, and you know, uh, four, forty touchdown seasons. You know, but he's not going to do that this year. 
he's going to have maybe – he'll maybe have 4,000 yards. But right now he's got 13 touchdowns. Yeah, he's still a QB1, though. With 13 tor- touchdowns? Yeah, he's still a QB1. A low end, maybe. It's still st- still startable. But I'm just saying, like, there's that means that there's probably 11 other quarterbacks I'd rather start over Drew. Yeah, right now it's um, Russell Wilson, Carson Wentz, Alex Smith, Cam Newton, Dak Prescott, Tom Brady, Deshaun Watson, who I guess you know, isn't right. going to finish there, Kirk Cousins, Jared Goff, Matthew Stafford, Drew Brees. Okay, so I named Jared Goff and Matthew Stafford and Alex Smith over Drew Brees, and you told me those were both. But yet they're playing better than him. Yeah. So is it just the name that you're holding on to at this point? No, it's the fact that Drew Brees is still an elite quarterback. No, let's fucking move on, because I'm not going to sit here and argue why Drew Brees is great. You sound insane. Do you realize that? <laughs> Listen, I think he was Dumb fucking great. question. <laughs> you know, I agree. He was great. It's no, not is is presently he is great. Not this season. He's I'm sorry. still Drew Brees. Okay, I I must have touched a nerve or something. No, I'm just sick <laughs> of trying to justify why he's good. <laughs> you know who isn't good? Your boy Willie Sneed. No, oh, dude, that was that was such a <laughs> <laughs> that has to be probably one of your most regretful calls. Yeah, it was. But you know what? I'm not the only, you know, fantasy <coughs> analyst who's on the Willie Sneed train either. Maybe no. it was more than every single other person. But of course, I not. once we found out that he got that DUI and was suspended, I feel like the team was just they were over you know, sort of shunning him. Yeah, they were over it. Well, speaking of over it, the Bills are over Tyrod Taylor, so now they're starting Peterman. Are we you talking see, about Tyrod this? said it was because he's black. Oh yeah, God. You know, I'm sorry, but. You can't play the race card just because you don't get your way. Yeah, his numbers have not been good. No, I'm sorry, but yeah, you something needs to change. And it's not because you're black, Tyra. Because nope. there's other black quarterbacks in the league, so take it easy. Yeah, uh, it's because you just threw for 96 yards and a pick. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that, no. Uh, sorry, I was sitting too far. 56 yards. Oof. In a Oof. game where you were trailing the entire time. You only threw 56 yards in passing. That That's how bad you are. <laughs> that's pretty pathetic. Yeah, and I'm not going to, you know, sit over here and want to get in this huge discussion, but it's, you know, it's clearly because you were terrible. Exactly. Yeah, and they want to see what they have in, in this rookie, I guess, because they know what they have in Tyrod Taylor. It's someone who's just going to play it safe, throw you, hopefully, you know, get you about <laughs> 200 yards, a touchdown or two, and a pick. And I think the Bills are sick of having that type of player. They want someone who's going to take chances. And not to mention, I mean, before these last couple of games, we thought the Bills were, you know, ready for maybe to make that jump, at least to the playoffs. Yeah, jump into the wild card spot. Right. But now, I mean, then, then, then you have to think about this. So Tyrod Taylor, you know, lost to two big games that you guys really needed to win. So now they need to start the rookie because... They have five draft picks in the top in the first three rounds after making all these moves they they did. So they need to figure out, hey, do we at least have a quarterback of the future that we can develop while we use these draft picks at other spots that we really need to fill? Yeah, or that's, they, I mean, that's that's a great – I hadn't thought about it that way. That's a great insight. Yeah, I mean because otherwise they may have to package some of these picks that they acquired to go trade up into the top of the draft to get, get a new quarterback. Yep. Yeah. So, so, so why yeah. not see what you have? Exactly. So as far as fantasy relevance is concerned, LaShawn McCoy, because you probably don't have anything better, you're going to have to start Kelvin Benjamin. He's probably going to be the only guy there that will that should be okay with a guy like Peterman, maybe. Nah, I think LaShawn McCoy is going to be still be good. No, I'm not talking about McCoy. I'm talking about Kelvin Benjamin. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was you. You switched over to that when I was looking up where we had McCoy ranked. Oh, yeah. Side. No, I was saying McCoy. You're gonna start, but as far as Calvin Benjamin, I was like, you're gonna have to because you know. I mean, no, I'm not playing him this week. <sighs> I, I can't. I do feel it. like I feel like you have to flex him. That's that's kind of a gross decision. <laughs> it's a gross. I mean, it really depends on your team. At the end of the day. If you can rock out a lineup, which it's very possible you could be rocking out a lineup like uh, Professor Chris mentioned before, Golden Tate, Stefan Diggs, Robert Woods, then you don't have to start Calvin Benjamin. Right. So I have him in one league. I'm looking at it right now. 
Currently, I have Kelvin on the bench, and I'm starting. Okay. My three wide receivers are Julio, Deshaun Jackson, and Adam Thielen. I see a scenario where I would start Kelvin Benjamin over Deshaun Jackson. Okay. I just I just don't like it, Deshaun Jackson because he's just so boom and bust. It's still something like this is going to be a decision I'm going to be wrestling with until the game start. <laughs> well, it's speaking, not something I'm 100 percent about. Well, speaking of still to uh, till the game starts, Melvin Gordon, Austin Eckler, what is going on here? You are the Melvin Gordon truther. Tell us still what's am. Going, well, what's going on? Austin Eckler had a flute game, got lucky. So what's he going on? had two twenty-yard passing, or yeah, two twenty-yard touchdown receptions, and on or twenty plus, and on both of those, he broke a tackle and got free. It's not like you know he was wide open down the middle of the field or anything. He made a good move, and these were plays where it was just Melvin Gordon getting a rest. It's not like he was in there for Melvin. So it's. Yeah, it it still doesn't uh, still doesn't bother me. I'm still going to start Melvin Gordon. I said at the beginning of the year I had him going. He I had him as my RB four, and he's the RB five right now. And he you know will finish as the four with Zeke, uh, you know, not playing anymore. Well, we just need to see Melvin Gordon start picking it back up like it was at the beginning of the season. You're absolutely right. Yeah, because yep, he has slowed I really down. Want to see that. I do, too, because I have shares of, of Gordon in plenty of my teams, um, especially in one of my big money leagues where I'm not out of it yet like my other one. You know, I'm damn near close, though. I need yeah. I would, you know, so uh, I need and I, I think maybe maybe another reason is that, you know, when Melvin Gordon's in there, you know he's probably going to get the ball somehow. But when Austin Eckler was in there... It was more of a passing situation. They didn't expect him to be as involved. No. So I think maybe I think that had a lot to do with it too. I mean, Gordon still had 16 carries, but only 27 yards because they were just all over him the whole time. Well, let's let's quickly go through these next two games because we are running really low on time. Let's do it. Bengals, Broncos, AJ Joe Green, Joe Mixon, Bengals defense. Um, yeah, they haven't been what they are, but this is, I mean, the Bengals are a pretty good matchup for defense. And especially when you consider Brock Osweiler and what he's yep. been doing. Yep. And, wh- and what did I say? I said Brock Osweiler would be worse than Trevor Simeon. And so far, I've been proven wrong. What a shock. I mean, come on. <laughs> th- th- there's still a chance. They're both bad. They're both bad. But Trevor Simeon was not as bad as this. I mean, wh- what's Osweiler done? Um... I mean, the team's lost by, like, 50 points, two starts. Was it really that much? Yeah. Oh, Philly and New England. All right, well, yeah, two great offenses. Um, yeah, hasn't been great, but the numbers don't look much worse than what Trevor Simeon was starting to do. Perhaps not. But we will see in this matchup if they're – are they still running Osweiler? I'm pretty sure they are. Yeah, they are. And then they – well, and after this, they keep running him. And I'm not advocating for Brock Osweiler at all, so don't get me wrong. But – he does have Raiders, Dolphins, Jets, Colts, Redskins. So I think that that's more good news for the Broncos players than it is for Oswald. Yeah, that's very true. All right, let's move on. New England, Oakland. So let's talk about Rex Burkhead. That seems to be the the big uh, topic. Yes, Burkhead's it does. Burkhead's going to get his 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 money. You know, he's going to get fed. What's going on here? That means that it's not going to be Burkhead. <laughs> exactly. Because that's DR what Lewis. Belichick does. Yeah, I mean, is that what's what the coach speak has been this week? I really haven't been following too closely. No, I mean, it's just your usual. There's really never any coach speak out of New New, out of New England. Yeah, it's just Darth Belichick over there. <laughs> Darth Belichick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, very true. So let's talk about uh, players you like in this game. I mean, I like the quarterbacks. I yeah. like Marshawn Lynch, Deion Lewis. Michael Crabtree is best. Michael Crabtree and Jared Cook are probably my two favorite. Yeah, and then Gronk, because, you know, Gronk smash. What a fucking dude, bro. <laughs> what a dude, bro. What a bro, dude. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, Sunday night game. Let's get to it. Sunday night, Philly, Dallas. It's a, I, I'm looking I, forward to this one. <clears throat> yeah, a Sunday night game where I won't be going. Do I really want to watch this? No, I'll yeah. be like, yeah, I want to watch this. Finally. Finally. It would have been better with Zeke probably in, the, in that game, but it's okay. Still still should be a pretty damn good one. Uh, I think other than other than Alfred Morris, LeGarrette Blunt, I think everybody else is startable. 
What about Jay Jai? Can you start him? I think you have to. I think you have to as well, as much as I hate to admit it, but I think... Yeah, and, five, and none yeah. of us are on the JHIE train. No, but I feel like you'll, fi- you'll finally... Might, it might pay off that you drafted JHIE, maybe. Yep, I agree. Alshon Jeffrey, I think, is a great start. Zach Ertz, locked and loaded, 100%. Any... What What about, besides Des Bryant? Cole like, Beasley, I, Jason Witten? I'd say Jason Witten, because he's a guy that Dak has leaned on, but... I mean, Terrence Williams seems like a guy who's been coming on, but he doesn't get the t- any touchdowns. Yeah, I mean, he had a great game. I think a lot of people overreacted to that two weeks ago. Yeah, that's how I feel. I mean, yep. he's definitely a, a guy that Dak likes, but not enough to where you're like fantasy-wise. Right. So now let's go to our last game. Let's go to this Monday night feast. Atlanta in Seattle. Mm. I mean, this game should be a lot more fun than it sounds because – you look at Atlanta and go, wow, they that team that team was in the Super Bowl last year? I don't believe it. <laughs> I feel I feel like the last couple games they've started to show signs of life. And yeah, I'm yeah. really hoping that they'll be able to continue that and Julio will be able to have a lot of success without Richard Sherman there. Well, you know, it's gonna be Tevin Coleman show without Devontae De- Freeman, but yep. I mean, how, what's the ceiling here against Seattle's defense in Seattle? I mean, I don't think the ceiling is super high, but I, you know, I'm still playing Tevin Coleman. You can't ever bench Julio Jones. No, and I'm not saying to bench Tevin Coleman. My only point is, I mean, people are getting excited. Oh, Devontae Freeman's out. That means I've got Tevin Coleman, and oh, it's good. You know, I could start him, and oh, 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 oh. You know, and like people like frenzying out there because they got Tevin Coleman. All I'm saying is, I mean, that's great. The opportunity is going to be there, just like for guys like Samaj P. Ryan and Jamal Williams this week. It's temper expectations. Exactly. Because this is not one of your walk in the park kind of defenses you're going up against. Right. And as far as Seattle's offense is concerned, I mean, Jimmy Graham is going to play this week, am I not mistaken? Yep. Looks like it. Yep. So you got Doug Baldwin in there as well. And you still can't touch any of those running backs. No, I mean, if you were going to pick one up to play, the, if you had to play one this week, it's time I well. think it would be J.D. McKissick. Really? If it's in a PPR, yeah. I think he's going to step into that C.J. Procise role. Well, that's very true. That is a name to watch for this week. I mean, he, he definitely showed uh, something when Procise was out. Man, this guy Procise, he cannot catch a break, can he? I feel like we haven't even seen him play. No, I mean, he's been injured almost the entire season, I think. And then he was finally yeah. came coming back, and then he got hurt again. He's been injured almost his entire career. Uh, that's why, Yeah, he's like the Kevin White of running backs. <laughs> 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 I mean, really. he uh, It's it's unbelievable, man. I, I feel bad for guys like that, though. You know? They always thought sought out as like going to be talented prospects, and then they just injuries. Never let them get their, get their chance. Yep. And that is it. Look at that. Look at that, we even have time to spare, but not really, because we have to end the show. Oh, uh, bummer. Oh, uh, bummer. But we did it. We got all the games. I think we helped you guys out. Told you who you can play and who you shouldn't play this week. But if you feel like maybe we didn't go in depth for you, maybe we didn't cover every little detail and statistic, maybe you just want to talk to us some more, There's plenty of ways to reach out to us. Very simple. For example, you can just go to the website that we have at sleepwire.com. We got your rankings. You can go ahead and listen to previous episodes. Hell, you could even email us to, for us to answer any question. Or, best thing for you guys to do is you can reach out to us on Twitter or any social media platform that we may have, like Professor Chris. Where can they reach you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at CMOR Sleeperwire. And Instagram at Professor Chris SW. And see, for me, you can only find me on Twitter at Sleepwire Nick. And for go. Mickey, you can find him at Sleepwire Show. That is our official Sleepwire Twitter, but that is the one he also is available at. So please, guys, go follow us on there and tweet at us. We will be certainly uh, grateful to help you guys out. And another thing, too, sleepwire.com, as I mentioned, has previous episodes. There's one episode in particular. You guys need to go listen to it is an episode where I interview Rob's dad and Rob. If you do not know who this man is, he is a dear friend of ours for the show. He has helped us with the show and he suffers from chronic Lyme disease. And we are trying desperately to help him 
get the money he needs for the treatments that he needs to survive. So please, guys, go to sleepwire.com or go to gofundme.com slash robjr for more information. Well, Chris, did we do it again? We certainly did. We created that little bit of thunder, a <laughs> little bit of lightning. A little uh, bit, just a tiny bit. Just a little, little tiny bit? Just a tiny bit. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for joining me on tonight's show. Yeah, it was fun, man. I will see you next week. I will see you next week. For Professor Chris, I'm Nick Several Things. So long, everybody. Good night. Peace. That's it. I'm done. I promise. I'm done. That's it. I'm no sorry. More. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I promise. I just believe in kicking a man while he's down. God damn. I want to talk about something. All right. I want I to like talk to, I'd like to say something. That I'm prepared. Are you ready to get down to business and do exactly what I tell you to do? Gentlemen, I have a plan. At this point, you may be asking yourself, what the hell is this wish? Society tells us to act civilized, but the truth is we're animals, and sometimes you gotta let it out. We'll snap out of it. We have sort of a problem here. We're trying to get crazy with this. Give up. Just quit. Not up in here. Not up in here. Loser. I ain't no loser. I don't think that you're appreciating the urgency here. My friend, you're entering a world of pain. You're all gonna experience intense mental, physical strength. Ah! I know there's a lot riding on it, but it's all psychological. Just gotta stay in a positive frame of mind. Looks like the most fun I've ever seen in my entire life. You know what your problem is? You live in a fantasy land. The less you do, the more you do. Well, think about it, you know? Tell them, McCluskey! Tell them what time it is! It's not that crap each other. Well, Florence Nightingale over here play a little defense. Do you think you can win? He's saying I'm going to do Billy Madison. Separately, we are flawed and vulnerable, but together... We will both mash you! What? What? Where you at? Well, that's what you gotta do when you find yourself in a vicious cockfight. Never give up. Never surrender. Then you win, Ricky! You win! And you don't win for anybody else! You win for you! You know why? Because the man takes what he wants! He takes it all! We must make a stand, here and now. All right! Let's do this! I love this plan! I'm excited to be a part of it! love of God! Cherish! <laughs> hey, Janice. Great talk. Church? Yeah? You ever wonder why we're here? You know, Caboose, I used to not care. I just went along with the orders and hoped that everything would work out for me. But after all that's happened, you know what I've learned? It's not about hating the guy on the other side because someone told you to. I mean, you should hate someone because they're an asshole, or a pervert, or a snob, or they're lazy, or arrogant, or an idiot, or a know-it-all. Those are reasons to dislike somebody. You don't hate a person because someone told you to. You have to learn to despise people on a personal level. Not because they're red, or because they're blue, but because you know them, and you see them every single day, and you can't stand them because they're a complete and total fucking douchebag.